My next guest is a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Morehouse College. That's right here in Atlanta, Georgia. This is, this is so appropriate. Alumnus of University of Pennsylvania Law School, way up north, so south and north. And on May 23rd of this year, he won Survivor Ghost Island Season 36. Now, that's something. I, I don't know if I'd do that. He did, and we're going to talk about how a boy, Phi Beta Kappa, so you know he's smart now. You know he's smart. Went to an island and hung out there half naked for, for a whole season. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation, Wendell Holland. How you doing, Wendell? My man, thank you for that wonderful intro. I appreciate it. Um, good hey, to be here. Hey, hey, Wendell, where you based at right now? Philadelphia, man, Philadelphia. Born and raised except for school and except for Survivor. Okay, so you were born and raised there, but you came to college, came down to Atlanta for college. Yeah, man, I had to go to the best. You know, I had to go to the best school, so I had to come to the A-Town mm-hmm. and get my uh, get my education at Morehouse. Get that good southern food, you know, get that good southern exactly. food on, and you went back up to Philly, hey. home of the Super Bowl champions for Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, yes, indeed. And you're a champion. And I'm a champion. <laughs> now, let's talk about your world champion, the city's world champion. You know, you're fighting for baseball, your, your, your basketball team. So Philadelphia is winning, a city of winners. And you represent that. That's what that. I'm thinking. That's what you yes, represent sir. now. You know, my boy Kevin yes, Hart, sir. he's a winner. <laughs> he's from Philly. <laughs> now, now, they got to put you, got the Rocky statue downtown. You know, right there. Yeah. You, I hope you took a selfie with that when you won the Survivor. You know, you know I did. You know I did. I have a good. I have a good picture right next to the Rocky statue. I know my man. I know my man. <laughs> now, so, so let's talk about it. Okay, you did Survivor, thirty six season, thirty six season of Survivor. You have been wanting to do this show for a long time. Tell us why. Yes. Yeah. So I've I've always been um, kind of a. Well, growing up, I liked to build, like, tree houses and, you know, play around in my parents' backyard. And I guess about 10 years ago, I started watching this show, Survivor, and I'm like, man, it's, it looks like a difficult show, but mm-hmm. it looks like a show that I could put all of my talents to, and it looks like a show I could do pretty well at because um, I was pretty smart, pretty athletic. I played a lot of sports, mm-hmm. pretty social, have a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, this game requires all those abilities so maybe I could uh, maybe I could try my ha- hand at it. Okay, cool. So so let's let's, let's the stage has been set. We know he's smart. Phi Beta Kappa at the incredible Morehouse College in Atlanta, yes, Georgia. Sir. Okay, yes. law school at University of Pennsylvania. He talking that yes. intelligence. Okay, we know he can get around. <laughs> so now he's been wanting to do this for like ten years. So he was looking at you. So you this was a planned action. You you just like didn't stumble oh, yeah. up on this. So were you rejected several times? Did you apply yeah. several times? Explain up. Tell us about that. So at Morehouse, I learned the saying: proper preparation prevents poor performance. Right. So I I've been watching the show for years and wanting to get on the show. Mm-hmm. So as I watched it, I was taking notes for years on strategy, how I would play, how I re- would react to certain situations, <laughs> mm-hmm. what have you. Mm-hmm. And I started started applying, I'd say, like, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And over the years, I sent in many application videos. I went to live castings. I never got it through, like, uh, when I was out of law school, I was clerking for a few judges in Philly. I never got it. I had my suit and tie on. I was clean cut then, and I never got it. And then finally, I take this career path change, and I start my own company. And I grow out an afro. I got my beard. I'm kind of living my full life. Mm-hmm. And they finally say, we want this version of Wendell. We want you to come on the show. So that I think it was the, the, the preparation and also the persistence in me not giving up and me continuing to apply and apply and apply. Well, I think also the fact that you, you made a statement there, a transition. I, I, I feel you became who you are today. You know, like you said, you know, you didn't come in there, come into, okay, this is Survivor. You're on the island. You said you were coming in that mm-hmm. clean cut. That's a look that don't work on that island. <laughs> Because you're pulling you're off right. your clothes. The tie going somewhere. Exactly. It's not going to stay on you, exactly. you know what I'm saying? So, so that look right there, they say, well, he, we like him, but I don't really think he get it. Because they want you to survive. Exactly. Because I've, I've, I'm a big fan of these shows. Well, another one of my favorite shows is Naked and Afraid. I love that show. Oh, Ooh, I love that show. Now, you, you get on that show, Wendell. Now, uh, you got to be the real deal for that. <laughs> <laughs> out, there with oh, the, out there trying to start a fire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and so so, so I, I appreciate the fact that you're showing everybody that even in this television show, 
you had to put in preparation. You had to examine and have a plan of action. And the key thing you said was persistency. And Mm -hmm. also what you said was key to me in hearing this process is that you made a transition in your life. Let's talk about that because you were doing everything that people tell you to do. I used to work for IBM before I became a stand-up comic. And before I did, I left for stand-up comic, I became a sitcom writer. When I left a sitcom writer, I became a television producer. Then I became a manager of talent. So that's a lot of transitions. And people always tell me, man, you know how to reinvent yourself. And I just tell people, right. I'm not afraid to step out there. Tell us about your personality, Wendell. Well, that's exactly it. You can't be afraid to step out there. You can't be afraid to take risks and, and you know, take a leap of faith. Um, calculated risks, though. Like, uh, I'm not just, I'm not just doing something off of a whim. I had, um, when I was clerking for a few judges in Philly, I was in civil court and I was in family court, and I needed a bed for myself. And on my salary, I couldn't afford the, these nicer high-end beds that I, really, that I really wanted. So I decided to build my own bed. Um, and it was a, it was a beautiful piece of furniture. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I, I have a gift right here. This is something that I can do. And then over time, I started building more beds on the side while I was still clerking and working hard, you know, nine to five. I started building beds and other kinds of furniture and selling it on the side. So I'm like, you know what? This is something that fulfills me. This is something that I love doing. I'm using my creative, um, gifts and, um, being entrepreneurial. So maybe this is something, maybe this might be my path. So then the final judge that I clerked for retired in uh, 2015. And I was like, man, this might be the perfect opportunity. Um, my opportunity finally met my preparation, my building this business on the side. And so finally I decided to go full force and create this furniture company where I can have a creative outlet. I could be the artist that I truly am inside, be the entrepreneur that I am. And uh, and do what I love, you know. So this this is a big old this is an extreme change, okay. Yes. And first of all, how do you build a bed, man? <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 you threw that out there, like you know, like you know, like uh, see, I built erector sets, <laughs> I put together Hot Wheel tracks. You know, I I, yeah. I I I I've glued together some airplanes. <laughs> you sitting up here talking about, you know, I built my oh, bed. Man. Like, what plan, yeah. what do you go online to find out how to build a bed? So, okay, I've always been good with my hands. I'll start off, I should have said that first. I've always been good with my hands. I've been able to kind of build things. My dad, uh, my dad is an attorney. He's a retired attorney, but growing up, he always had me helping him do things like frame out the basement, drywall right, here, or right. just, you know, so I've always been handy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I, I, I found all these random pieces of wood and different things, and I kind of pieced it together to make what I call this, like, patchwork-style headboard with, mm-hmm. like, many pieces of wood, and then I stained the whole thing. And that has been my aesthetic as far as my uh, as my pieces. It's been, like, kind of patchworky. We use reclaimed wood, and we right. use barn wood. So there's, like, this reused element, this uh, recycled element, this uh, environmentally friendly, eco-friendly element to my company where we uh, we take, you know, what might be considered junk, like we'll, we'll tear down a barn. Right, right. And we'll then transition Which is really, a really good wood. Table. Which is really, really exactly. good, strong wood that survived the weather and all that good exactly. stuff. So so we're going to hold this thought. I hope you're enjoying this interview. I'm, I'm, I'm loving you, dude, man. I'm loving it, man. I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone with a champion. He's from the city of champions, <laughs> Philadelphia, mm-hmm. home of Kevin okay. Hart, the Eagles, the 76ers. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The Phillies. We're going to be right back with more Money Make Conversations. Keep winning, everybody. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald. You're listening listening to Money Making Conversation. My guest is a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Morehouse College that's based in Atlanta, Georgia, where I my radio show is based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, HBCU grad. You know, my radio show airs on HBCU campus across America. So we're tying everything in on this show. Plus, He's uh, he attended the University of Pennsylvania Law School. I mean, he was a practicing he was practicing law when he you know he was doing his own thing. But more importantly, mm-hmm. he was able to make a transition. And we was talking about that. And I love the fact that uh, you're saying that Rashawn. That's why it's important that uh, you have role models. And if your role model happens to be a parent, it's even better. And that was a person that that laid the foundation for who you are today. Your dad, 
by allow you to do, do some other things besides the fact that, like you said, he was a lawyer. And, uh, and, yeah. and and so, but that didn't stop him from saying that that's all I want to do. And that kind of opened your mind. So I have to ask you this now. You out there successful law, and then you know, people always think you're crazy anyway. You know, first of all, you're a <laughs> lawyer. Now you're making furniture. Now you mm-hmm. want to go over here and do survival. What was mm-hmm. that? What was that conversation like when it hit the streets, <laughs> Mister Black Man? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so my part, I guess, uh, you know. My parents had had known that I'd been watching this show and kind of applying, but and they they see me, you know, you know, practicing making fire outside and doing these things, but I don't think they really thought that <laughs> I would actually get on, let alone get far in it, let alone win the game. So, um, I I when I finally got the call that I was going to be on the show, mm-hmm. I told my I sent an email to my my mother, my father, and my I have an older and a younger sister. Right. And I said, hey guys. All of this work finally paid off. You guys know I've been applying and applying for Survivor, and I finally I got the call. I'm going out on the island in two months, and they were they were pretty shocked. You know, they were like, I can't, I can't believe this is really happening. They knew that I got to a, a final casting in L.A. They knew I was flown out there, but I don't know if they really thought that I was really going to make it. And uh, so they were pretty shocked, but at the same time, they know the person I am. They know that I'm I'm good at like I'm a hustler. I'm good at navigating different situations. I'm good at talking to different people. I'm pretty athletic. I'm pretty smart. They're so, like, we know wherever we put you, you're gonna you're gonna be all right. You're gonna rise. So I think that they mm-hmm. yeah, you're gonna rise exactly. And uh, I think that you know, in the game of Survivor, it's it's a lot you, but it's also a lot of luck. In my season, I thought there was a lot of God. It was God's plan for me to get through a lot of things, and I. I found my way to the top. I found my way to the end, and I, I got it done. Let's talk about because you know you you okay. You flown to the island. Let's get, let's get a little bit about that experience yeah. a little bit because right. because we'll get right into you, it. you know tell us about that 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 moment they you know they say hey game on yeah yeah so I'm I'm 34 years old <laughs> I'm in I'm in all right shape um, I get out to this island. I'm looking around, man. I see a bunch of young, like, gladiator-looking guys. You know, um, a bunch of guys that are in their 20s, that are in tip-top shape, taller than me, stronger than me. And I'm like, man, this this is going to be this is gonna be a battle. I'm going to have to find a, a way. I can't just muscle my way through this. I got to use something else. I got to use my brain. I got to use my social game. I got to use my knowledge of, of the game of Survivor. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I got out there, it was, it was a little intimidating at first. But at the same time, I know my abilities. I'm confident in my abilities. So I'm like, you know what? Put me, put me in a challenge where I gotta shoot something into a basket. Put me in a challenge where I have to swim a little bit and then jump out and do a puzzle. Put me in these challenges that require a little more than just just brute strength. And I know I will. I know I'll overcome it. I know I'll succeed at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it seemed like that. That's pretty much what happened. Like, like my team. I, I was I was put on a good tribe to start. So as a team, we were pretty cohesive, but for a couple of people beefing with each other, you know, that, that, that'll that happen. <laughs> um, but we won a lot of the challenges. Right. So if you're winning, that means you're not going to tribal council. That means people aren't getting voted off of your tribe. Right. So if I just keep winning, I'm not going to go home. Right. But then, so basically through the merge, until the merge, the merge is where all, both tribes come together and it's now a totally individual game. But right. Up through the merge, I only saw one tribal council, which means I, I could have only been voted out one time because we just kept winning. Right. And based on my social play, they didn't vote me out that night, whatever, we voted someone else out. But then after the merge, by that time, a few of the big dogs were already eliminated, <laughs> and I had been playing kind of a low-key game, and I was ready to turn things up because now it's an individual game. Now it's time to sprint to the end. So that's when I really turned things up. Despite the fact that some guys were bigger or stronger, some people might have been smarter. I think I had the total package out there, you know. Mental, physical, and determination. That's, That's what it. you had. That's a total package. That's because throughout your yeah. whole story, you were talking about you was always thinking out there. You was always thinking. Always, always. What kept thinking out there was because I'm a builder and I like to fidget with things. I would be out there. I'd take myself out of a situation. I'd go build something. I'd go. I'd keep my mind working. I'd go build a crab trap that's real intricate that takes me, you know, a few hours to do. Or I go build a swing set for everyone to keep them happy. You know, I'm the guy that people love to be around because he's building cool stuff and he's making camp life 
a little a little nicer. You so, out there, you out there building Disneyland out there. Disneyland exactly. out there on the Survivor. I need a resort out there. I need a resort out there. <laughs> I love it. So, what was the prize money for? What was the prize money? And what you what did you oh, do man. with it? Oh man! So the prize money was a million dollars, and um, that was that was a, uh, a great check to get. But what I've done is, um, I talked to my father. We we filmed like a year ago, and then it took like nine months to air. Right. So I kind of I kind of had a good feeling that although they they re- reveal the win live, you know, at the end of the season, I had a good feeling that I had won. So I went home and I told one person. I talked to my dad and I said, "Hey, Dad, I think I might I think I might have got the job done out there. Can you give me some advice on how to invest this money? Because I don't want to be one of these guys that gets a big check and and blows it." So. He took me to his uh, financial planner. Um, they, uh, it's like an investment group called the Pennsylvania Trust. And he kind of introduced me to those guys. So then finally, fast forward to when I finally win and get the check, I went. Um, I took the million-dollar check right to this company and I invested it. And so now I am fully invested in a diversified stock portfolio. It's in, it's in stocks. Just watching it roll up. That stock market is exactly. on fire. It's on fire. That's, right now. that's it. That's <laughs> it. And so in in April, in April, I'm going to take a big hit, and I got to pay the about 400k in tax. Absolutely, absolutely. But that's a big hit. But until then, at least that that amount of money is still going to accrue interest. So I'm just, I'm just I'm tell you still something. That work. Go talk to a tax planner. Get your the defined benefit plan. I'm telling uh, you, okay. defined benefit plan. You can take that 400 and put it in there, and you don't pay them nothing. Okay, nothing. Okay. okay, just just think this out. A lot of people think you got to pay taxes on everything, and there they are they are there are strategic strategic uh, angles of this is legitimate. I don't I don't give out bad advice on my show unless it's a lifestyle that I, I participate in. But don't feel that you can give away that whole four hundred thousand. Okay. Okay. All right. So defined benefit plan. Defined benefit plan. Okay. It's something you have to keep up going, but you, 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 you got a business, you got charity engagement you're dealing with. So th- just, yeah. just don't do it. Just don't give it away like that. Okay. Now, Absolutely. Hey, yeah. I, I'm glad that you told me that. Okay. Because we're friends now, because I love you, man. Absolutely. I really do. I say Absolutely. that, man, because uh, you, your energy's right. And I'm, 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 I consider you a friend. Now let's talk about a couple of things before we wrap this up. Give another shout out about your furniture business. And then I want to talk oh, yeah. about your charitable causes. We're going to wrap this okay. up. Okay. Yes. So, um, my my company is called Beev Unlimited. That's B E V E Unlimited. Uh, Beev is just a childhood nickname of mine, mm-hmm. and you can find that on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Beev Unlimited, and my own personal page. Obviously, my name is Wendell Holland. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Wendell Holland. So basically, the company we are affiliate Philadelphia based custom furniture company specializing in reclaimed wood and. We deliver up and down the East Coast all the time. We're in Atlanta all the time, um, and we ship all across the nation. Man, I'm a, I'm, a, you know, some, I'm gonna be in Philly probably about three weeks. I'm gonna come see you, okay? Because I got to, yes, sir. You know, I could go that. online, but I, I, I just gotta dap you up, man. Take a selfie, go to the little, little Philadelphia <laughs> cheese steak. We gotta do some things together. Yeah. Now, tell us I'll about your, you your, your, your community endeavors. We got one minute left. Wrap us up on a okay. high note. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just got back from Jamaica. Um, uh, a couple of days ago, I was doing a, a charity event out there. Every year, I host a basketball camp out there in Treasure Beach. We brought 50 coaches from the U.S. out there, and we coached 800 kids out there. And basically, we brought uh, we raised so much money, we brought baskets, we brought sneakers, uh, shorts, shoes, and we fed these kids for the whole week, 800 kids. And uh, this is something I do every year. It's the PMBL, that's Philadelphia Men's Basketball League, Treasure Beach, basketball camp and uh you can see i have a link on my bio on my instagram for that if anyone wants to donate but i also i do stuff here in philly i love talking to children and just motivating people and letting them know that they can follow a non-traditional path they can do what they love they can follow their passion and they can be successful my man you are a champion. Will Smith is a champion. He's from Philly. Kevin Hart's a champion. He's from Philly. Yes, yes. Super Bowl champion. <laughs> Come on here, brother. Keep winning, man. Yes, I appreciate you calling in on Money Making Conversations. I always tell people to keep winning. You are a winner. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate you, sir. All right, my brother. Money Making Conversation, the land of winners.